my Salem show, my radio show, we did an amazing thing. We got on YouTube. We started making a lot of money from YouTube. 220,000 subscribers, which in some ways is not a lot, but for us it was kind of amazing. It was growing and growing. I dared to have Naomi Wolf on my program, okay? This is a liberal feminist. She was in my class at Yale University, 100% different from me, except on the right things, she is awake and she's speaking bravely. I had her on my program, she spoke about vaccine mandates, right? YouTube completely canceled my show, wiped it out, okay? Gigantic fi financial hit, but more important, because we're living in a uh, monopolistic world where the quote unquote conservatives in Congress are afraid to stand up and say this is a monopoly and we need to do something about it. So they're cowards also, whether they're Christians or not, they're cowards. But the point is wiped out. And I would say to you simply this, if you want to know who's right and who's wrong, you look at how they operate. When somebody crushes you because you dared to have somebody on to discuss vaccine mandates, do you need to know that they're evil? In other words, if somebody is interested in the truth, they don't behave that way. And I keep thinking of Solomon and the baby. You want to know who's the mother? Who's the mother? The, you can see from the way the one responds and the way the other responds, you right away know that's the mother. This woman would be very happy to see it all burn. Yeah. Yeah. There are people, they don't care about the truth, and we're seeing it in spades. If you don't see the actions of the, the cancel culture, I mean, the idea that my program could get wiped out, I find it hilarious. Like, can you imagine the filth that is on, that is on, on YouTube? There's just endless filth of every kind. But they wiped out my show. And I think to myself, folks, we're in a war Amen. for the truth. Yep. We're in a war for the souls of people. And, and by the way, you know, when we talk about trying to reach the younger generation, I think th the more we try to be hip, the, the more we make twice the disciples of hell that we are when we're doing that. Amen. Right. Amen. You want to know what's hip? Yeah. Is standing up against tyranny. Yeah. Not fearing. Yeah. I'm just saying what, what's attractive, because the, the, the question 45 minutes ago when Cynthia asked it, the question, in a sense, is when you stand up with your life for something, when you say, I, I fear nothing, okay, mm. what does that prove? It proves you actually are a Christian who actually believes Jesus actually defeated death on the cross. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't actually believe that, yeah. which many Christians don't, right. because Jesus doesn't say, like, so where's the... Where's your statement of faith? Where's your statement of faith? He just looks at your life and he sees, are you living as though death has been defeated? Amen. If you're living that way, then I know you believe it. If yeah. you're not living that way in what you say from the pulpit, in how you behave, then it is proof you do not believe it and you should fear for your soul. Amen. We're living at a time now where that is the question. If you fear death, you do not believe Jesus defeated death on the cross. That's and right. if the American church, I believe we're going through this hell now mm. as a gift to the church. Amen. It's God's severe mercy to say, I, I need you to wake up. And I'm going to allow you to go through these things to wake up for your soul's sake and the sake of the souls of all in your life. Absolutely. Because this is it. If you do not live as though death has been defeated, mm you are not really even the church. And the German church, we saw what happened. Why would we think we're any different from those good German Christians who just missed it this much? Yep. Five minutes too late, they woke up. Yeah. The, I believe the Lord is speaking to us now and saying, that is you yeah. unless you wake up and, and, now. And, and, and